Hey, in this video, I'm gonna give you the number one best way to lose body fat. Hello and welcome to Total Health with Dr. Nick, where my purpose is to inspire, empower, and motivate you to live longer, healthier, and more abundant lives. And this is gonna be by far probably one of your favorite videos I ever do because everybody wants to know, how do I lose body fat? What is the best way? Well guys, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. You can start with bariatric surgery, where you have a, you know, a, a loop put around your stomach or your duodenum, that has a whole host of problems in itself, all the way to liposuction. And that's got another list of problems that it can have. So by far the best way to lose body fat has to come from lifestyle changes. Now, there is best ways to do that too, so stick around, it's not over at this point. I haven't given you just the best way. Stick around, I'm gonna give you the absolute best way that you can lose body fat and keep it off, and keep it off comfortably, okay? So exercise and nutrition, those are two lifestyle changes that we can make to absolutely lose body fat. But think about this, a lot of people just, hey, I'm just gonna to go to the gym, I'm just gonna exercise. Guys, I always say this, you cannot exercise off a bad diet. It's not gonna happen, you can't do it. You might eat a muffin or a cinnamon roll or something that's anywhere from four, five, 600, maybe even a thousand calories. You will never work that off in the gym, I promise you. You could be there all day long, you cannot work off that many calories. You go to the gym, you might walk off two or 300 at the most, but you're not gonna work off a bad diet. So. That one's right off the list, so that leaves nutrition. So what can we do about nutrition? Well, I like to say this anyway. When it comes to exercise and nutrition, exercise is for a strong fit body. Nutrition is for a lean and healthy body. Okay, so when it really comes down to burning fat and getting rid of it forever, nutrition's always gonna win. That is the one that's gonna get you lean and healthy where this one's gonna get you strong and fit. So nutrition wins. So what about nutrition? What are the best things we can do when it comes to nutrition? Well, right away, you would think cut calories. I'll just start cutting calories. That's gonna be the easiest way to do it. And you know what, guys? It is an easy way to do it because you can do it right in your phone. You can use different apps where you can absolutely see how many calories you're taking in and just reduce them down. And that should be easy. That should be it, video's over. But as you know, that's not the best way to do it. Why? Because your brain is a very energy dependent organ and it can't store its own energy. So it's very dependent on the energy floating around in the bloodstream. The brain is very sensitive to that. So if it starts to sense low energy in your bloodstream, because by the way, your body's always storing fat, always storing calories, that's what it does. It's designed for that. So if it's storing it and it's not flowing around in your bloodstream, your brain says, hey, I don't see energy out there. I don't see it in the bloodstream. So what do you do? The brain starts to cause hunger. And when it causes hunger, and you know what I'm talking about, you get these cravings and hunger comes on, hunger always wins. So hunger will always win when it comes to cutting calories. So that is not the best way to do it. The best way to do it is you actually have to reduce insulin. That is gonna be the secret, that's gonna be the key, that is gonna be the best way to absolutely burn fat. With cutting calories without addressing insulin, you will never ever be successful. Now, can you do both? Yes, but number one has to be that you reduce insulin. By reducing insulin, the metabolic engine increases and burns fat for fuel, producing ketones in the liver as the metabolism goes up and the blood is loaded with energy. And guys, at this point, the brain senses the energy, it senses all these calories and this energy floating around through the bloodstream and it says, hey, you know what? We don't need to eat, we're not hungry, we're okay. We're not dying here, we're not starving, it's all good. Controlling calories becomes automatic. So what does that mean? Well, once you've got these ketones floating around in your blood and your body is in ketosis at this point, your body feels satiated, you're not hungry, your brain is sensing, hey, there's plenty of ketones floating around in the blood, there's plenty of energy out there, I don't need to eat, it's all good. Calorie consumption goes down automatically. You don't have to think about it. So if you're on, say, the ketogenic diet or 
my version of it, which we include genetics and food sensitivity testing. So I call it a, kind of an upgraded version of the ketogenic diet. We call it the metabolic healing diet. Well, when you're on that kind of diet or lifestyle, I should say, Cutting calories is automatic because you're not hungry. You never feel hungry anymore. You always feel satiated. So this makes it very, very easy to reduce insulin when you know what to do. In fact, Dr. Ben Bickman has done extensive research. He's probably one of the foremost experts on how to grow fat cells in a Petri dish. And what he said was you can have all the glucose, all the calories that you want floating around in a Petri dish with fat cells, and the fat cells wouldn't even know what to do with it. They won't gain mass, they won't grow, they won't absorb it, they won't do anything, even though they have glucose and calories floating all around them. But the minute you introduce insulin, Dr. Bickman says the cells immediately start to bring in the calories and start to store the fat. So that is the number one thing. When exposed to insulin, cells store more fat. So that's the key. We've got to bring that insulin down. Now, fat cells can do one of two things. Number one, they can either grow in size. We call that hypertrophy. So the fat cells are doubling, even as much as quadrupling in size. Or we can have what we call hyperplasia, which means the fat cells are multiplying. They actually make more and more and more fat cells and don't get to that bigger size. They stay smaller, but they actually multiply. Now, this is not as common, except in some genetic individuals where they have the genetics for it. But most people, instead of just making more and more and more fat cells, they simply enlarge the fat cells. So your fat cells aren't going to necessarily multiply in numbers, but they are going to get bigger in size, up to maybe four times that big. So this is the most common way that fat cells actually grow is in size. They store more and more fat. Now, here's where the problem comes in. As these fat cells are storing more fat, they get to a point where they say, you know what, we're not going to explode. We're not going to self-destruct here. So we're going to tell insulin, hey, insulin, you know what? We don't want to hear you anymore. We're not listening to you anymore. And they become insulin resistant. When you have this chronically elevated amounts of insulin in the blood, your body becomes insulin resistant. So the solution then has to be make the fat cells shrink. Get them smaller in size. Like I said, not smaller in number, but smaller in size. That is the key right there. So how do we get the fat cells actually reducing in size back to the normal size that they should be? Well, basically, manage your macros. The number one way is going to be to manage your macros. So like I said, the number one way to lose fat is to manage your insulin or reduce insulin, keep them down. And by the way, the problem with the standard American diet, as I call the SAD diet, is you're eating carbs or you're eating, grazing, snacking all day long. You're never allowing your insulin levels to go down in your bloodstream. And as a result of that, you become insulin resistant, but also too, your body's chronically in storage mode. When you take food in and it causes an insulin spike, you're in storage mode. Insulin insulate, insulin stores. It's a storage hormone. So how do we get around that? Manage your macros. What do you do? Start by reducing your carbs. Get your carbs down to about 10%. Maybe some people less. Some people maybe need to get it down to maybe under 20 grams of carbs a day. But still, look at your total amount of calories a day. Make sure that your carbs are less than, say, 10%, especially under the range of 50 grams or less. Then increase your proteins. Proteins have a thermogenic effect. Proteins actually cost energy to burn it. So it's got a really good thermogenic effect to where it actually costs energy to burn protein. So proteins are a great source. Plus, you have to look at it from a standpoint of which is going to spike insulin the most. That is carbs. Carbs will always spike insulin. Protein can spike it a little bit, but not very much. The one that spikes it the least, and it should be the bulk of your diet. So when you're looking at the amount of calories you're taking in each day, roughly 65, 70% of the calories should be in the form of high quality fats. Now, what do I mean by that? Maybe things like salmon, olive oil, coconut oil, avocado oil, olives, avocados, things like that, beef tallow, lard. Those are the things you want to take in. Ghee, butter, all these different things are great, great quality fats, especially if they're grass fed 
and wild caught rather than, you know, basically in a trough where they're just giving them all kinds of antibiotics and colorings in these pens, but instead wild caught salmon, things like that, wild caught fish. The protein, once again, can be any kind. Proteins from fish, from meat, from chicken, as long as it's pasture raised, as long as it's grass fed, grass finished, and once again, wild caught. And try to keep your carbs from mainly vegetables. You don't need the carbs from cookies and cakes and crackers. Anytime you have these foods that are very dry, like cookies, cakes, and crackers, you know they're gonna be very carb rich. Whereas your vegetables, even a sweet potato, is gonna keep your insulin levels lower. Now, once again, look at your numbers. Make sure you're under 10%. And what that looks like in grams then, maybe 50 grams or less. That's where you really, really wanna be. What are some other options you can do too? Once you get the insulin right, okay, once you get that right, everything else falls into place. Then you can start reducing calories. But you know what, like I said, if you're doing the metabolic healing diet or the ketogenic diet, you're actually gonna be reducing calories already because your body is very satiated. But even at that, even if, and studies have been shown, that people who have lower carb, even higher calorie diets, will not store fat compared to people who have higher carb, lower calorie diets. So as long as those carbs are up, your body's gonna be storing, whether you're taking in little calories or not. Conversely, if you're keeping your insulin levels low, you could take in more calories and still not store it. Your body's in burning mode. So as soon as your insulin levels go down, your body's in burning mode, and you will actually burn it anyway and not store it. So. Reducing the calories, you can do that, or your body's gonna do it automatically because you're not gonna be hungry on this type of eating plan. And then of course you can throw in fasting. Fasting can be typically intermittent fasting where you're not eating 16 hours and then you just eat in an eight hour window. Most people do it where they stop eating around eight o'clock at night and don't eat until about noon the next day. I've got videos on that you can watch. But either way guys, like I said, start reducing your insulin. Number one thing, not you know, bariatric surgery, not liposuction, not things like that, not even reducing calories. Number one thing, reduce that insulin the way I showed you by reducing your carbs, keeping your proteins moderate, your fats high, and then you can throw in these other things. Well, guys, I hope you love the video. Hey, listen, before you go, if you are struggling with health issues, whether it be metabolic syndrome, diabetes, heart disease, check out the video I have coming right up at the end here. Stick around another couple of minutes, maybe a minute or so and it's gonna explain a lot. It's gonna introduce you to maybe a webinar that you may wanna look at, so that way you can get more information as to how we can help you. So many of you are struggling out there and don't know what to do. All you have to do is raise your hand and ask for help. That's it. So like I said, watch the video that's coming right up. You don't even need to go anywhere. Just watch the video and it'll explain a lot. Well guys, I love and appreciate you. This is Dr. Nick. I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye. Hey guys, I wanted to take a moment to speak with you. You know, so many of you are struggling, you're sick, you're suffering, you've been told you have to have dangerous surgeries or be on medication. Many of you are overweight, have been struggling with your weight, maybe you have diabetes or prediabetes or heart disease or any other type of medical uh, metabolic disorder. Well guys, I completely understand. The problem is there's so much information out there, it's almost like drinking water from a fire hose, it's daunting. How do you possibly get all this information in? Who do you believe who not to believe? Well, what I always say is it's not just about the information, it's really about transformation. We see more and more people, right now 78% of our population is overweight, more of which are actually obese. 133 million have diabetes or prediabetes, so we're not getting any healthier. In fact, we're actually getting sicker. But like I said, there's no shortage of information out there, there's no shortage of gyms, yet a society as a whole, we're getting sicker and sicker. Well, like I said, guys, it's all about transformation, and that is something that we can help you with. Our goal is to help you transform, not just have more information, but actually reach your sole purpose, actually be healthier, so that way you can do what God created you to do. All it takes is actually you reaching out and raising your hand. Because guys, don't try to figure this out on your own. It's too much information. You can try if you like, but if you'd like more information as how we can help you, click the link below. In the description box is a link that'll take you to a webinar. You can watch it in the privacy of your own home. And if it resonates with you, if your heart <laughs> skips a beat in a good way and you feel good about it,
then guys, schedule a call. At the end of the video, it'll give you an option to schedule a call with us. We'll hop on the phone together. We'll laugh, we'll cry, we'll figure it out. We're gonna take a look as to what you're doing that's working and not working in your health right now. We'll look at where you wanna go with your health. And if I can help you reach that faster, I'll show you what that looks like. If I can't and you don't want our help, that's okay too. I'll do the best I can to steer you in the right direction that serves you the best. But not only that, I want you to get on the call clarity, but more importantly, I want you to see what your next steps are. But like I said, guys, it all starts with you raising your hand and asking for help. Click the link below, it'll take you to the webinar, and at the end, it'll schedule a call for you where you can talk to me personally. Well, guys, I look forward to speaking with you. I love and appreciate you. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.